Hello, this is your host Sahar and Ready. And in this video, we're going to be talking about five, four reasons why entrepreneurs fail. As we know, it's not easy to start a business, and the entrepreneurship uh, failing percentage is actually 80%. There are a lot of reasons why entrepreneurs can fail, but we are going to be talking today about the four main reasons why entrepreneur uh, fails and how we can avoid them so we can actually succeed as entrepreneurs, being an entrepreneur myself. So every small business starts with a dream, but it takes more than a dream to achieve success or to make that business grow or to achieve the goals. We need knowledge and resources to help our dreams come true. Obviously, it's logical, right? Startups are not for the faint heart. They're not for the weak heart. That's why 90% of the startup fails. The stories about brands exploding on social media are not that many. Otherwise, they are inspiring, but the, it's not the normal case. It's actually sometimes the exception to the case. The overnight success that we see sometimes usually have a long long periods behind them on why they achieve their success, hard work, uh, and a lot of efforts. Entrepreneurs start their business never thinking about fame, of course. They work hard, put their efforts, time, passion, and money into the startup. Unfortunately, not everybody succeeds, and that's what we are discussing today. As in everything in life that looks like a mystery, there are myths around them. And that's why it's a kind of mystery. Like entrepreneurship is that mysterious thing that few people adventure themselves into the world of entrepreneurship. And as many, uh, as any in other ende uh, endeavor that we choose in our life, there are challenges and there are opportunities. Today, we are going to be sharing some uh, of either or, as well as the major mistakes that we can avoid. Our intention here is to offer you more clarity in discovering yourself, exercise a better relationship with others, and increase your, uh, the chances for your business success. So entrepreneurs have a unique set of skills and mindsets. Uh, with combined together, they create the success. Entrepreneurship is not a job, and it's not it's actually a mindset. It's a mind shift from bad habits to healthy habits. And most importantly, it's how to make these new habits stick. I remember I asked in one of the groups on Facebook, what can help an entrepreneur to start? And I got an answer with someone told me, I'm an entrepreneur already. I don't need any help. And right there and then, I can kind of predict the future of that person because as entrepreneurs, I want to let you know, we never stop learning. It's a choice that we make of a journey throughout our whole life. It's day in, day out. It's more of a mindset. It's not a job and it's not a title. And that's why maybe some people fail. Entrepreneurs, like I said, are unique. They have strength in their character and they persevere and they have that, that determination inside of them uh, to actually succeed. Being an entrepreneur is a learned ability, so we can all learn to become successful entrepreneurs, but we need to be attentive to the environment around us and to learn from whatever resources and to be resourceful. The best skill an entrepreneur can learn and apply right away is what we call the speed of implementation is what you learn, you apply right away. You don't let it stand and become stale. You use it immediately, especially if you have a great idea. You do not let it die. You do not put it on shelf for later on, and you do not wait to implement what you learn. So to be successful, entrepreneurs have to balance not two things, but three things actually like a pyramid in the life. The first one is the business needs, and it, it, it means the growth of your business, the customer service, where you are innovating and what you are creating. The second one is your, entre your entrepreneur needs, your own self needs, and those of the people around you, those of your family. And the third one, which is the most important part, 
are the needs of your customer and what do they need. They're not necessarily in that order, but but it's they are the crucial parts on how to base your entrepreneurship. So before I start discussing the four main points that can make an entrepreneur fail, I want to share first the definition of what an entrepreneur means. And as we know, entrepreneur is actually uh, a French word that comes from uh, um, um, from entre. Entre means to connect things together. And entreprendre, meaning is like take, um, take, take command or take control of something. And it means undertaking or self-motivation, connecting things um, uh, or connecting your business. That's, that's the number one definition. Two, it means uh, they are, beside being entrepreneurs, they are managers, they're owners, they, they manage people, they run a business, someone that starts to create and offer values for customers that they are innovative. But most importantly, they are risk takers. They leave the safety of the status quo, they leave the safety of nine to five job, and they know that they need to take risk towards success. They know that they have to challenge the status quo. Human beings are programmed actually to be uh, on the defensive and to avoid change, to avoid loss. And it's normal to us as human beings that our brain uh, um, acts that way to protect ourselves. But entrepreneur have the tendency to push the limit, to push the envelope, not to play it safe, but take calculated risk till they create this opportunity. Number four, as entrepreneurs, we are very persistent people. We know that things don't always work the way we want it, and we are prepared to that, and we are prepared to face the challenge and to overcome them because we look at obstacles as actually opportunities, they're not barriers, because we are committed. We are committed inside out. We commit our time, our effort, and our money, and we take risks to succeed. Number five, we create value as entrepreneurs. So to others, either by creating job for others, jobs for others or creating products or services that can be of help to others. In short, successful entrepreneurs are defined as people who by means of a vision and hard work have managed to achieve a measure of control over their own destiny. At the same time, have developed a healthy balance between their lifestyle and their work. Entrepreneurs uh, do what they do to create profitable businesses. Their entrepreneurial style is created by complex of set of behaviors and attitudes that impact the flexibility or rigidity when facing obstacles and achieving tasks and how they solve these problems or even offer customer service. And that's what makes the difference between a successful and unfailing entrepreneur. It sounds counterintuitive sometimes that failure is actually, um, is, is that high of a percent, percentage in entrepreneurship. But as entrepreneur fail, it's not because they're not trying or they're not trying hard enough, or it's not, not because they're not persevering. And let me tell you how I know that, or, or at least how I came to that conclusion. For the last five years and a half, I have been a business advisor for SBDC, which is subsidiary, subsidiary of Small Business Administration. We help small businesses grow their business. And after working for over 1,200 small businesses, mainly women owned. I started seeing common threats between them through the different profiles of entrepreneurs that either do make it or they get stuck or don't make it. And sometimes by their attitude and their reactions and their responses, not that I predict, but I can tell who's gonna take it to the end line and who's gonna like kind of go back and forth and who will not even continue. It becomes very obvious after a while. Most, if not all entrepreneurs get very, including myself, of course, we get very emotionally attached and involved in our own ideas or businesses 
and they become like our little babies and we lose any perspective from around us. So there are rules to the road that I always tell my clients. Number one, it's not about you. Entrepreneurs, as entrepreneurs, we spend every waking hour working on our idea, on our business, in the beginning and in the end. And we think that we have the best unique product, the best unique service ever created. That, uh, And we get into that tunnel vision because most of the time we work by ourselves. So we get like limited uh, in, a, in a tunnel vin uh, vision and we become limited to what we work on and what we feel we represent. Number two, it's not about your product or your service. Entrepreneur worked very hard on their products and services without sometimes doing the proper research if it's needed, if their customers really are, are looking for that, or is it they don't discover um, how much time they wasted till they actually practically get the stuff into the market. And sometimes they sacrifice a lot to get there, just not to get any results. Sometimes we feel that what we have to offer, again, it's like our little baby is the most important thing. But if we do not realize what our customer is looking for and what, like for example, um, if we want to, like when I started, I wanted to do something about how women can overcome fear, how women can get unstuck. But after a while, I started realizing, yes, it's part of entrepreneurship, but people do not realize that they have that problem. They, they, they realize it later on as a symptom, but they will not look for it as a main uh, product or service that they need for maybe after you start coaching them or helping them as an entrepreneur, they will find that this is where they're stuck. But from the get go, this is not what they're looking for. And that's why your product can fall on deaf ears. That's why I mean, it's not about your product or your, or, or your service. And then the third one, it's not about what you know, but about what your client think. Knowing what, entre what, uh, what entrepreneur want to do, knowing what they have a passion for, Preparing their business and marketing plans are not enough to start or grow their business. We need to know, again, like I, like I, I just explained, we need to know what our customers are looking for. Are we offering them a solution to a problem that they have or are we filling a gap that they're looking for? Number four, we have the wrong definition of success. Thinking success is measured only by money is not the right thing because success, mean, success means different things to different people. None of these meanings are right or wrong. It's the definition of what you see as success that really matter. So it, and if you are not clear from the beginning of what the definition of success is, you're not gonna be able to achieve it. You need to have a very clear vision of what success means to you to reach it. Trying to survive in the business can make entrepreneurs forget what success means to them. So success should be what inspires us no matter what it is. The remedy for the first three points is knowing your client, research your client and find your client. So when I say it's not about you, but it's about your clients, how they behave and feel. It's not about your product and your services, but it's about what your product need, uh, what your clients need as product and service and what they might be missing. It's not about what you know, it's about how your client think and what they want. Basically, it's about defining the proper niche of your audience. Define the proper audience. Create their persona based on psychodemographics, traits and characters, meaning, how they feel, what is their behavior when they buy, what do they buy and what do they don't buy and why they buy it. That's what we mean by psychodemographics. So it's not only demographics like age, gender, uh, marital status, location, education, but it's also about how they feel, 
what's the culture that's why cross cultural marketing is very important when you market to a female is different than you market to a male when you market to a baby boomer is different than you market to a millennial or to generation x you market to the asian american market is different than you market to the african american market we need to get deep into segmenting our market properly and remembering that trying to appeal to everybody is appealing to no one jack of all trades is is master of none finding the right niche leads to success and leads us to the next point the remedy for number four and focusing is for the, on the success definition of success is knowing the why why are we doing what we're doing and we need to dig deeper for example when i want to know something inside of me i ask myself at least three times every answer that i get why 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 to get to the bottom of the purpose that leads to my own definition of what i really want to achieve we need to know why we are entrepreneurs why are we doing what we're doing and let me tell you i hear it a lot they say um because i want to help others so i ask them who are the others what are you doing to help them what kind of help are you offering and when i ask them what is unique about you they say i have the best customer service the best product the best price but this is not uniqueness we're going to be talking about more about branding and unique selling proposition and value proposition in other videos. But today I wanted to share with you the four main reasons why uh, entrepreneurs fail, that it's not about you. It's not about your products or your services. It's not about what you know, and you need to always define your definition of success and never forget it by knowing your why or purpose you want to be an entrepreneur. This is the end of this video. My name is Sahar Andradi. I would love to hear from you. You can email me at info at reinventyourselftogreatness.com. Till next time, go out, be the light in the world. You have a genius inside of you. Just go and let the people know who you are and help people as much as you can. Till next time.